How's it going guys, it's Mr Lone Wolf and uh, today I'm going to go and give this thing a review the, uh, the Lodestar 1700, it's the JBE version and uh, yeah it's pretty good, well worth grabbing, it's very nicely balanced, it's got a lot of options and stuff and it's uh, yeah a lot of fun, even more than it was. Uh, as for the engine, I think they're all the normal ones but uh, yeah I've gone for the most powerful Gearboxes, it's got like the off-road, the high range, it's got a JBE version personally I've just grabbed the high range for this one uh, the JBE version is probably very good um, yeah, suspension, it's got like raised, pretty standard issue. Well, again, it's like a JBE version, but um, yeah. I've skipped through some of the tyres because it just takes it's literally minutes to scroll through this. These are some of the, is it 55 inch of the all terrains or something? So you've got stuff in there like the Hummer tyres, which are pretty cool. Uh, this is the 55 inch, I believe, of the MUDs, which, uh, yeah, you got like the JBE version of those custom MUDs that are on the Tager and stuff, which is what I've ended up putting on this. Um, but you've also got all these different various options. Like I say, I just sort of cut the bits out and left uh, the 55 inch tyres in because otherwise, uh, yeah, it literally add like three minutes or something scrolling through it. Um, I can't remember if I just said, but yeah, it's got like the Hummer tyres, which is pretty cool. Those tyres that had the chains on, uh, they look very nice. I've used them. They're a little bit slippery on... Uh, the icy rocks when I drove in Northport but other than that they're actually pretty decent so I'm not knocking them just because of that but in the end like I said there's so many different tyres when I'm doing these reviews I've just got to kind of pick a lane pick a setup and go for it because otherwise the video could be five hours of me just jumping from tyre to tyre and engine to engine and all sorts um yeah snorkel it's got snorkel on it which is pretty cool the winch is like autonomous plus so it works whether you're on your roof or not but it's stronger than the normal one with the roof racks, you've got that roof rack there and then you've got the pickup bed and stuff. You've also got supplies in the cab. What you don't want to do though is add that custom pickup bed because it basically knocks your top roof rack off. It has 50 points less than just the custom, uh, sorry, just the pickup bed on its own. So uh, yeah, you're better off having like that combination I've got now. And there's loads of other various things you can add on, but there's not like a saddle or anything. So you just got like sort of all the add-ons that are on the Taz and stuff. Um, yeah, in the way of like other things to put on again, I'm, I'm not going to go through everything like mad, but the bumpers, that one, like the stock bumper, sits very flush to the truck. It's completely out of the way, basically. Uh, in the end, though, I've gone for this. If you look, it doesn't add a whole lot, but it is a weighted front bumper. It'd be pretty cool, to be honest, if there was a another even heavier weighted front bumper. But yeah, that's why I went for it, because a bit of weight at the front is better than nothing. It's still a very tidy... Uh, front bumper doesn't really get in the way or anything. The tyres are very big and are practically stick out in front of this truck. Uh, the exhaust, yeah, you have to do the camera angle to look at them. They're various like side exit or twin downpipes. I think I went for the twin downpipes because uh, it is pretty smoky, but yeah, that just kicks it to the floor. I certainly wouldn't get like the heat shielded one that sticks up on that. Paint jobs, again, I'm not going to go through them all because there's bloody loads of them. You can see now I'm just kind of scrolling straight down the list rather than across them all. But yeah, there's all different kinds of shades of this, that and everything. I've gone for this orange version at the minute, which I'm going to be switching the paint job um, kind of throughout the night. But yeah, there's a little look at it. As I said, it's the Lodestar front, but uh, the back that I've added on is from the F750. And I mean, I was just flying through the interior stuff. I kind of, as I was going through it, I thought, I've already done a review of the Lodestar, so I've kind of already gone through a lot of the uh, various add-ons. It's all pretty normal stuff. I was just having a quick look though if the revs like pretty slow revving but again you don't really feel it in that sense I'm not too sure if the uh, the rev counters and how it applies the power in game really correspond or not uh, yeah trailers though it's pretty cool you can have like the scout trailers and the normal truck trailers so you've got like the four slot uh, flatbed which ma makes, you know, it can carry four slots now, which is pretty cool. Obviously the two slots, the maintenance trailer, all that sort of stuff. Uh, I just wanted to show you this though, quickly. I've just rolled, and I think with this roof rack on, it's a serious pain in the ass to flip back to its wheels. Um, in the end, I went back, I took the roof rack off, I also took the in-cab supplies out. I, I, my guess would be it's more the roof rack. But either way, I'm driving it around with this setup because... I'm just doing a review anyway, I don't need to um, have it like stopped and ready to go off all night, I'm kind of recovering as I'm testing little bits. Um, yeah, so I'm going to 
for the most part, be driving it like this, which has still got, I think, 450 or something repair points in the pickup bed at the back, so there's still plenty to keep you going, and spare tyres and stuff, and fuel. Um, yeah, like I said, I went for these tyres, the, the custom muds, but they're the JB version, so I believe they've got better stats. There is the actual custom muds that are just like the standard ones in game that you can also get in the same size and everything else, but yeah, these ones are stats just sort of say excellent, excellent, etc. But we'll be changing to a different set soon as well. As for motoring through there though, I mean, it, yeah, it ticks along pretty nicely. And I'd say it feels, I would say, more realistic to how, like, a lot of trucks when I just drove through that first muddy bit they'd instantly just hit it and get slowed down to barely anything. Various people have mentioned in the comments over the months they've got various trucks like this and they've said yeah when I go flying through muddy sections it's like it doesn't just slow you down to half a mile an hour automatically like some people have nailed through yeah, all kinds of stuff at pretty quick speed and uh, I have, I've never been officially properly like gone out off-roading for the sole purpose of off-roading but between hanging out with my brothers and doing all sorts of stuff we've uh, yeah done a bit of a bit of hillbilly off-roading, a bit of just kind of make it up as we go along. Uh, I'll get to that anyway. Um, yeah, driving across the rocks, uh, to be honest, they almost looked like they were sort of just going through the tyres for the most part. There was a bit of bumping around. I did take a little bit of suspension, hit that or one damage, so that's fine by me. But yeah, for the most part, it was having no issues. To be honest, it's kind of better that it... I mean, I'm not saying it completely just glitches through the rocks or whatever. I'm clearly bouncing on them. But they're not to the point where, you know, you hit one little rock and it just fires the side of your truck in the air and you roll. So, overall, I'd say it was a pretty nice balance. Then it, yeah, I was just kind of rumbling over them, but it wasn't throwing me all over the place. Dropped the hammer a bit now. That started pulling to the left. I tried to steer out of it, but yeah. And again, I wouldn't really blame this thing. It's more the, the steering mechanics and everything in this game, the way trucks sit on the road isn't wholly realistic and I don't mind whatever I mean they've obviously had to achieve certain aspects in this game they want it to be off-road and all the rest of it but yeah we all kind of know they're a little bit skittish on uh, on pavement took out the anti-terrorist barricade nearly rolled me but it didn't and I have to say this looks a little bit slow but that's actually very good through that first section because everything no matter how much um, like power, grip, whatever, you go ridiculously slow through that. And driving through here in general, uh, to me that doesn't really seem overpowered. That's like, you know, I was only going like 10, 15 miles an hour. If that, it was just pottering along through a river that's not all that deep. So, yeah, I, I, overall, I, uh, it's just good. It's a lot of fun, this truck. I've gone for the quasi-monster muds, but the studded versions. And these are pretty nice as well. They obviously sit nice and wide, so uh, rolling's not as much of an issue. Had no issue climbing over these barriers and everything with the size of the tyres and suspension. It bumps over them, uh, no problem. Which is nice. A little bit awkward getting over that rock I just climbed over, but practically everything is. I flung a winch out to the tree and kind of blagged my way over it, but yeah, most stuff's like that. You can see there's tyre tracks already in the snow. Uh, that's where I drove these, like, uh, the ones in the tyre list that are called single something, they, like, they've got nice black alloys. They look cool. Um, I can't remember the name of them off the top of my head. Yeah, drove over there just fine. It was getting up onto this rock. It just kept slipping off to the left or right, and I couldn't really get a clean run. Whereas these, it did slip a little bit over to the uh, left there, but it was just, it was going better. No issues on ground clearance when it jumps down. To be honest... If you're basically vertical with your nose on the floor, your engine's going to stall before you wouldn't be able to drive away from it, if that makes sense, because the front tyres are just so close to the front. And there, that was one of the nicest, cleanest uh, <laughs> wall jumps I've done. It went pretty well. There's a little glitch there. There's a couple of glitches that get me throughout the night. I apologise for them, but I already did multiple footage to try and account for glitches and uh, I've run out of editing spaces so I can't keep adding other bits of footage in but there's nothing crazy it's just more slightly irritating that it even does glitch a little second out but yeah got through the trees no issue uh, plenty of power zipped up that mountain no problem did a nice little jump 
but you can see it's not really tipping over or anything. It's a, it is tippable, but it's definitely, particularly with these nice wide tyres, it's a very good. Even when I jump here, this is why I left that bin. It lands very nicely there. It didn't kind of land and fire itself over like it's a. Yeah, like it is just sat on complete springs that make you go flying around like a maniac. I think that's what that Frog's Titanius Maximus thing. Um, even though there's a lot of suspension travel in it, I think the way he's programmed it with, uh, like someone was saying, with dampers and everything, it's... Yeah, it kind of settles. It doesn't fire itself back up off the floor and make you spring around much. And even though uh, this thing, I don't know if it's got all that specific setup, but it works pretty nicely. Come flying out of that garage a little bit keen and uh, the trailer <laughs> kind of whipped around and flipped my cargo off. But yeah, we're going along again and to be fair, I mean the trailer's now it's loaded as well. You can see it's, if I slam on and stuff, I was kind of testing it. The trailer can push up behind me and kind of make me slip around a bit. It certainly does there, especially once my front tyre's dug into the snow there. Uh, like the mud, sorry. Whereas the back end and the trailer was still on like the icy road. But considering it is only a scout, that's pretty decent because there's plenty of trucks that kind of get pushed around by the trailer. For the most part, this still does pretty well at like the trailer follows you rather than just completely being a menace and making everything go wrong. And again, like I said, this is a scout, so it's uh yeah, it's already trying to kind of punch above its weight and compete with the trucks and now it does it is kind of more like a truck now I mean one good thing they always did with the Lodestar was give it truck engines and a truck gearbox rather than having like the freeway or the snow runner options it's got the high range and off-road which as I said the JBE gearbox I think I might have used it I'm sure it is very good it's just for the fact that this is a scout and I actually get to use the high range on it I do like the high range um so yeah that's why I went for it it's good to be home it's good to see my uh trailers see Makes the map feel lived in. <laughs> it feels like someone else, someone else was here once. Or a hundred times. I'm surprised to be honest it survived the uh, last update. That's kind of like... I, uh, yeah, I quite like my uh, <laughs> my trailer collection in Northport. Apparently in Phase 3 they're going to have the option where you can remove trailers. I probably will from some maps, but that, other than the fact that I do kind of like it now, <laughs> it... Yeah, I'm not removing them. <laughs> but it's also a bit of a glitch test, is what I was kind of saying. That's why I left some vehicles on White Valley and stuff. Just, you know, leave a few things around, see what happens when updates happen. Does it steal trailers, blah, blah, blah. So, there is a little bit of method to my madness. But I'm not going to lie. I am proud of the uh, the situation going on back there now. Yeah, <laughs> that's what she said. I mean, this thing as well, motors along through the snow and everything pretty nicely, even in the auto gear. It's uh, it's not, you know, just absolutely flying along like a madman. It's not trying to rush its way through the gears and then constantly having to, like, jump back down by itself. It just kind of sat in whatever gear it was in in auto and just sort of ticked along pretty nicely. A uh, bit of interior view. I could see over the bonnet good enough. Uh, looking around the windows, yeah, there's plenty of view. I can look out the window and see my tyres. I can see my tyre in the mirror as well, which is pretty cool. So, uh, yeah, sort of thumbs up in that situation. I go in here again and apologies, there is a glitch. I went down there, I actually didn't hit the river very good. <laughs> I kind of went off to the side, hit the rock. Uh, long story short, it gets over there, no issues. I would go back and get the footage for it, but like I said, one, I've run out of clips, and two, it's beyond doubt for this one. The tyres are so big and at the front that it'll have no issues just going over that river. It was more if you can drive it in a accurate enough line <laughs> to actually just go down and up the other side rather than uh, smashing into everything like I usually do. Uh, yeah, next up the old rock bridge. I don't know why well, normally I just put it in high range and absolutely hoof it along here, but for some reason, <laughs> I don't know what was happening, I must, must be ill or something because I didn't, but I did drive it off here on purpose because well, it was just the fact that this thing sits nice and high now, especially with the bigger tyres and race suspension. Uh, yeah, no issues really going through there. You could see, though, there's an element of, like, it was starting to float. And it wasn't going deep enough then to where it was floating, but it was definitely, you know, lifting a bit of the weight off the truck, and it was it was thinking about it. I've not been through it for ages. The reason it's left my tyre tracks in the snow there 
is because I left that trailer there. And the reason I'm mentioning that is because you remember the video I did with uh, the wrecker that's got like the snow plow and I cleared uh, the roads with some rocks and some people, I forgot to mention in the video, but when you restart the map it puts the rocks back in place but I was talking to someone in the comments after that video because they said does it reset it and uh, I was saying yes but when you leave your trailer near something it often doesn't reset the map so like my trailer was there it hadn't reset the tyre tracks on Lake Covd when I left a trailer near the ice where I do the ice test it wouldn't reset the ice until I moved the trailer out of the way so I know it's random but if you have got any rocky paths that you clear and you want to stay cleared you could park a trailer next to them and that for some reason should stop the rocks from resetting or like I said ice all sorts of stuff but yeah I'm just throwing it out there while I sort of you know that trailer being there that made the uh, tread pattern stay in the snow for a while kind of reminded me of it but that is a potential way around it I've not actually tested it for myself but I'm uh yeah I'm sure enough to mention it anyway so give it a go see what happens uh, yeah going through that mud there pretty decent to be honest because the tyres are nice and wide and this thing in total doesn't really weigh a hell of a lot it was quite good actually I think it's again like about how it should be but driving through that mud I sank through a bit but not you know it didn't absolutely just plummet through all the mud to the bottom it kind of sank a bit but sort of scooted its way along the top of it and uh, yeah I mean it got through there no issues climbing up the mountain was very good nose clearance great like Unless the, uh, or basically, if you've got a 90 degree, ang degree angle, if you drove up to a building, in theory, it could drive up the wall as long as it uh, has the grip and everything. But yeah, you can see the tyres sit just in front of the truck, so nose clearance, all that sort of stuff is uh, sort of a non issue. So next up, the tipping test. And it uh, went pretty nicely, but with these tyres as well, these are not just wide, but they, they've got about the right amount of weight to them where, yeah, it kind of. It naturally does want to sit on its tyres. And you can even see once it's landed, there's, the suspension did a pretty good job of kind of soaking up the initial bounce, but it didn't just fire me back out of its suspension as well and then keep flipping. And uh, yeah, this thing's moting so quick, I'm sort of almost lagging behind. It got up there, absolutely no issues. Moted it up there. And you can kind of tell now, it is pretty bloody good because most of tips are there. And the fact that this thing didn't tip and then kind of jumped over the peak and didn't tip the other way. It does tip now, that was uh, pushed me luck a bit too much. But yeah, I was about ver uh, yeah, vertical really by the time I was gone. You even see on the tipping test, I had to flick a winch to the tree just to initiate the roll. Which uh, is rare, yeah, most things actually just start going. And again, apologies, a little glitch there, but I was only driving to the top. You can see, though, it's like, it is actually manageable. Like, driving along these peaks, I am kind of choosing, yeah, you've got to put a bit of angle because you kind of drift around a bit as you're climbing along the peaks. But, yeah, I can choose my line. I can uh, I can sort of steer around stuff, over stuff, all sorts. It's, it is, yeah, very good for mountain climbing. Better than I thought it was going to be, to be honest. And again, because the thing itself hasn't got a whole lot of weight to it, but these tyres are pretty decently weighted. It, uh, yeah, it wants to stay sat on its tyres. So, uh, yeah, pretty happy with it so far. Pretty good result. I already knew when I drove this thing I do like it. I mean, I've always liked the Lodestar anyway. It's, uh, it's been my uh, second favourite scout since the game, you know, out, out of the scouts. Obviously, goddamn professional is our first but yeah this is just a very nice improved version of an already good truck and uh, they make a good combination it's just got more tyre options, more suspension options, extra gearbox options a lot more add-on options it's nice so next up off to quarry and uh, yeah bringing the four slot flatbed for this even though the thing does drive me crazy but I've got no other choice really, I can't put a uh, saddle on the back or anything so I can't get like a semi uh, sideboard trailer. And as for driving through here, um, I mean it's, I'd say it's doing pretty well all things considered. Again it's not the heaviest of trucks but as well if you remember it is a scout, not a, uh, yeah not a truck so certainly going a lot better than I think it would with most of the other uh, scouts. Also a vehicle, of course. 
Yeah, it's ticking along here pretty nicely though. It's not too erratic to try and steer and everything if you're just going flat out. Once you're in high, it's again quite a nice speed. It sort of just settles into high, and it, I, I just that's why I like the high range gearbox so much is for the high gear. It's it's quick enough that it, you don't feel like you're going slow, but it's not so fast that you start skidding around and that kind of mechanic starts kicking in. So it's just a yeah, pretty nice balance. And there's always a lot of power in high range in the high gear. That's never really an issue. Um, yeah, grab some slabs. It was a little glitch there, but I'm about to loop back around. You'll see why. Basically, when I drive to here, start climbing up. And, uh, yeah, it starts to do a wheelie. I just can't quite get my front end round enough. I'm just kind of skating along to the side a bit. You see, it was an amateur mistake. I came to the quarry, and I didn't bring a goddamn professional with me. That is where I went wrong. So I'll go for another loop. And try it again. Uh, yeah, that's why I just left this bit in because it glitched a minute ago. Driving through here with an empty trailer. No issues really whatsoever, even just in auto. And in low range, it's very good as well because that just kind of. I actually think as well, the low range gear on this. I don't know if there is any difference or if it just sounds that way or works out that way, but it feels like when you put it in low, like I have now, it still sounds like there's a decent amount of engine revs being applied. That's one of the things, again, part of the reason I choose high range over off-road is the extra low gears it gives you are just kind of rev caps, and some of them feel overly insane anyway, so... But yeah, that was feeling good. Again, I mean, I learned from my mistakes. Sent in the goddamn horse for a vehicle as a uh, mobile winch point just to be safe. And uh, yeah, well, I've attempted again. Now, what I'd rather would have happened here is winched from the front of this to the loaf, but it is what it is. Loaf's still doing his job. He's uh, slowly kind of swinging me around, getting me, getting me front end up. <laughs> yeah, that's what she said. So we got to this point. Started crabbing itself along, but yeah, this. Uh, trailer really is not keen on this first quarry hill. It's I remember this being an issue. I think it was like the Antarctic, probably not the Kolob because I think I would have had a. Uh... Oh no, I might have had the ramped flatbed actually with the Kolob. Either way, some seriously big trucks have issues getting a ramped flatbed up here. The sideboard semi is better at least. It doesn't go as horrifically bad. So I was winching to the loaf, trying to go for it. I mean, it's already, before anything's even touching the mud on the trailer, it's like it's already digging in. So I, I don't know if it's like the side rails on the ramp flatbed, but something just feels like it's there, but it's invisible, but it acts like an anchor in quite a lot of situations. So, all right, I'll go from the loaf. I can kind of dig the loaf in better when I'm driving it basically. I was first I was winching from the load star to the loaf and then I don't have control over the loaf. Which uh yeah, so going from this way. However, there's something I don't like that it does these days with the winch. I I'll get to it in a minute to be honest, but it's basically when you're hoovering it in the truck you're towing or whatever isn't putting as much effort in. Um yeah, you could see there I dug into the point I was wheeling the, uh, another issue with the winch is the winch strength isn't as strong so even though I was fully dug in and I was pulling on the uh, load star it just the winch length wasn't shortening but that also does kind of tell me that the uh, the trailer is anchored in there pretty good so another trick up my sleeve fortunately I uh, stuck a winch from the back of the ramped flatbed because I knew it would kind of hinge it over the hill uh, to the loaf and like I said this is a goddamn horse of a vehicle get yourself a loaf he always saves the day I mean, look at him, he's just, he's no arm, but every time you just need, you need a little helping hand, the loaf is there to sort you out. And at this point, I could have just flung a winch to that uh, telegraph pole the whole time, really. But you can see, yeah, I mean, the weighted front bumper it's got on is it's better than nothing, but an even more weighted front bumper would be uh, even better. However, I had a little idea, I thought, right, I'll stick the loaf right next to it so now I can't wheelie and it was actually quite work very well as you can see 
The only thing I think happened there is because I've not got a winch point in the middle, uh, especially once I clipped that telegraph pole with a loaf, I was using, like, say, the winch point on the left of this truck, and it was winched to the loaf. It's trying to pull the back end of the loaf up and to the left, but because the loaf was also flush with the front of the lodestar, yeah, it just tipped to the side, but have no fears. I mean, any of you that uh, know about the old horse or a vehicle, he's fine. He's probably listening for moles or something. Checking moisture levels in the mud. He'll be back in action in no time. Um, yeah, it was actually it was struggling a little bit there, getting over the rocks. I mean, that's probably... If I could change anything with this, uh, the... I mean, not this course. It's goddamn professional. It's so good. Even the computer couldn't save the footage. It just couldn't comprehend what just happened. But it's got an autonomous winch as soon as I got in it. Just stuck it on the telegraph pole and away. Um, yeah, maybe a little bit more weight to the Lodestar. But that's about it. But again, I've still got to like reiterate. It's a scout, not a truck. And it's uh, just the way it's all been put together as this version is good enough that it's, like, it's up there kind of competing with the trucks, really. So it's already... Uh, yeah, it's doing well. So again, sent the loaf up, getting his little loaf hole ready, because I probably knew what was going to happen after the uh, what went on in the first two quarry hills. And this thing, for the most part, I mean, it's crawling a fair way up there, but it was about now where it just gave up. I mean, it's wheeling, so I'm only now down to the two rear tyres. Just took a winch on the loaf, though. That sort of brings the nose back down for now gets me to about here but yeah it's still wanting to uh, wheelie pretty well the problem is about now yeah when I've shortened the winch a lot it starts to lift the back end of the loaf up and then it's like popping out of this loaf hole however um, it also loaf just saved me there from kind of going out over tip back down the hill and um, yeah as has happened before with many other trucks once I winch them to the top of the hill I can then reach the trees, which I'm about to do. This is what I left in, though, just to mention about the winches, which I don't like these days. You can hear I'm hoovering it in. And when I'm hoovering the winch in, the lodestar or whatever you're towing doesn't... It's not driving. Now it's driving. I hit the winch, see it immediately just cut power. And now it's like a dead weight again. Let go of the winch. The, the lodestar starts driving. But back in the day, you could kind of drive forward and hoover the winch in. And, uh, yeah, it it's, makes it even worse again, the fact that the winches are pretty weak and crap these days compared to uh, what they used to be. But, like I said, the loaf got me up to this point, and then I just flung a winch out to the tree. And, uh, yeah, it's more this trailer. Like, I'm really just not keen on it. As I said, if I had the uh, sideboard semi and a fifth wheel, if you could, I think it'd just go easy. It always just has. I mean, driving along normal roads and that, the flatbed isn't all that different or anything. It's when you're going yeah, over the pizza hills and stuff, there's just something about it that really likes to dig in. Anyway, driving down here, I kind of did a bit of a wheelie. Started to lever my uh, back end round, and yeah, that was that. <laughs> While I was there, though, it's fine. Do a bit of a uh, bit of map tidying. So I ain't got the cargo, but quite a lot of them have lost their cargo by now. Jumps off there with no issues. There's a nice little wheelie there. See how nicely though it stays planted, at least on its wheels. I know it's jumping around a lot, but yeah, that isn't an issue as long as it's uh, going to stay on its wheels. So next up the ice test, driving over those lumps of ice, it's actually did pretty well because uh, obviously I drive over here with just about everything to go and do the ice test and that ice can absolutely just delete anything from brand new to completely written off in a second. So the fact that this thing only took a few hits, it, uh, it did pretty well. Can you see there as well how a bit of the ice was broken? To my right there was a Yar 87 which I left on the map uh, when the update happened just as like a sacrificial <laughs> uh, truck, whatever, scout, just in case, just to see if it was going to steal everything. But yeah, that's what I mean. When you leave vehicles or trailers nearby, it uh, kind of doesn't fix the ice the way it normally would. So maybe the same will work for clearing rocks. And um, yeah, motoring along through here, it's I'm not sure if they've kind of updated the ice a bit anyway, 
But this thing's got nice fat chunky wide tyres and they kind of want to float in their own right. So it's motoring along here pretty well. But yeah, I'm not sure if they've actually adjusted the characteristics of this section to where the actual chunks aren't as ruthless. And you can see when I'm kind of squidging around now, it's almost a bit like a giant slush putty underneath there. So you sort of, once you break through, there's kind of squidgy eyes. It's almost behaving a little bit more like mud again. But in some ways, it's not necessarily a bad thing because as much as the ice I thought was really cool when they added it, and it was cool to mess around with, you soon learn that if you drove a truck in there, you're probably going to get stuck. So for the purposes of playing the game, it just became an obstacle to avoid then. It just wasn't worth going near the ice. With the way things went then, it looked more like if it's behaving a bit more like a slush puppy and you're not getting massive chunks of ice stuck underneath you, yeah, it might add a little bit more like, well, it's it might be worth going over there. Maybe I'll have a little bit of a awkward trouble, but it's not just an absolute guaranteed you will get stuck. So we'll see. It's early days, but... Um, yeah, did the Jeff special. Broke the suspension. <laughs> Use the R87 to flip me over. Did a bit more Jeff special in, flew into the water. Pretty uh, pretty standard night. So just quickly crossing this river on uh, bloody flooded foothills. And you can't really tell as bad. Yeah, with the frame rate on this map, it's just... It wasn't doing it too bad there, but it, for whatever reason, it just makes me feel a bit like dizzy sometimes. But not all the time, I don't know. Like I said, when I was on flooded foothills the other day and I was going to get that J... Uh, yeah, JBE Scout 800 footage. It was just, everything was going wrong. But even that was driving me mad every time I had to look at the uh, frame rate going all weird. Um, I mean, cut across there pretty well. As I got fairly deep, it kind of... <laughs> that's what she said. Um, yeah, it started to kind of float. So it was it was still clawing its way through there. But it sort of sabotages its own ability. And going along here, this is one of the straightest runs down here. I didn't even have to touch the steer and then it just kind of stayed straight. For some reason, stuck it in high and it said stalling, which is odd. So, like anyone would, I took it out high, rammed it straight back in high, and uh, it went better. But then, see, that's a prime example, like that post at the end of the runway, is how SnowRunner, the people, they make something good, and then they have to have some kind of punishment in lieu of the good thing they've added. And, uh, yeah, they added, like, a giant runway with a cliff at the end that you can go jumping off into the water but then at the last minute they went oh let's just stick a post right in the sweet spot where everybody's going to want to jump and then yeah they'll hit it and it'll fuck their attempt up for no apparent reason other than being a time wasting sons of bitches um, yeah <laughs> that's my rant about that post that post has cost me some serious hours um, yeah we're bringing a goddamn professional with us because I mean look at him flies like a beauty. Like a Pegasus. Uh, the JBE landed. I mean, of course the loaf landed. Did we ever expect any different? Don't mind the gap. Clear a path, people. We've got a goddamn loaf. He's rescuing things. As per usual. It's more because the winch is sideways. That truck, uh, JB Loadstar, keeps on an hour in whether to drive forward or backwards. Yeah, there's definitely with the, uh, like, if they just put a specific, uh, like, a drive and pull mode or whatever the, with the winch, the whole trying to do it sort of two in one, when you're hoovering the winch and it cuts the power and all that, I'm not, not too keen on that. Uh, anyway, going for a drowning test. As I was driving in, as you can see, it just starts to float the deeper you go, so by the time I was getting to about where the uh, snorkel would take damage. It's floating. So I can't really go, can't go any deeper. That's definitely not the case. Um, yeah, so I sent in P12. And again, I mean, a million and one reasons to get yourself a goddamn horse or a vehicle. Yet again, weight distribution loaf. See when it just slotted in there, I was like, oh yes, that's, that's the one. That's a sweet spot. Is what we like to see. Uh, I went to go and use the winch because uh, I'm not sure if it's just this JBE version but I can use the winch point on the roof and uh, I pretty much attach it straight to the loaf but as you can see when I'm driving when you've got a winch attached to something 
the loaf then started trying to drive by itself and what I didn't want it to do was just drive straight off the roof. So I then promptly disconnected the winch. But yep, yeah, weight distribution loaf did his job. We can now go deep enough. I mean, what a goddamn professional. Helps you go deeper. You can't really, uh, can't really knock it for that. And then I went in to go and do a drowning test. However, I was kind of like, do you know what? I'm going to combine a river crossing attempt with a drowning attempt. But reverse is out there pretty nice. Consider this little bit as kind of, you know, like that footage where they've got a tank and they balance a uh, pint of beer on the end of its barrel to demonstrate how good its like gyroscopic stabilization is or whatever. Same, same thing really, practically. Only the loaf is uh, far better than a pint of beer. It's like the whole brewery. So yeah, we're going for a, a river crossing attempt. You see where the load star went wrong? It should have stuck a pipe from its own snorkel to my loaf snorkel. Should have borrowed snorkels. That's for engine damage, that's the main thing I was like trying to say. Uh, yeah, once you go pretty deep and it starts getting up to the 20s, 30s, 40s, some pretty sizable chunks of engine health are uh, flying off it. I mean, overall, it's got pretty good health, for again, for a scout and everything. But yeah, I mean, look at the loaf. My disappointment is immeasurable and my day is ruined. Um, yeah, overall though, jokes aside, it is a very good vehicle, well well worth getting. It's uh, easily up there with one of my favourite mods that they've added. Um, yeah, it's just, it's exactly what I wanted mods to be for, like when we all had this game on console anyway and didn't have the mods, it's just an improvement on the original truck, and the original truck itself is already good, but this is just, yeah, a better, funner version. There's a lot more options available. It's actually pretty cheap. I think even fully upgraded is only about 68 grand. What is it there? About 40 odd grand. Um, yeah, so it's, ju it's just worth grabbing. There's a hell of a lot it you can do. You can make it more of a monster truck build like I've done or kind of tone it down and uh, yeah, go back to normal tires, smaller suspension, a weaker engine, all sorts of stuff. You've got various options on the back from fuel to the little uh, like Taz and Warthog a repair van body thing. Um, yeah, that's that's about it. <laughs> Worth grabbing. And then now, just one last little one. Go for a little quick play in the mountains. So overall, it's a, a kind of shorter review than normal because, again, this thing's pretty capable, so all the tests I've been putting it through, it just kind of motors along through them pretty nicely. And uh, it kind of ends up in a shorter video, really. I'm just doing the same thing in less time. And it has no, no issues motoring up here. Certainly is like an exploration scout and that is extremely good now. I mean, it, as you've seen as well in the uh, in Northport, it was doing very well up on the mountain tops there. Got a bit of a dodgy bounce there, but by this point I was just hoofing it up there, kind of messing around. It wasn't necessarily going to be in the video, but I kind of figured, yeah. I've done mountain tests before and as this thing clearly gets up there with no issues, then I might as well leave it in. And again, these are the uh, yeah the monster trucks, but they're, they've got the studs like the ch so they're chained, basically. And now, of course, when I drove down, it glitched. I could see my tree though. That's what I went for. <laughs> I couldn't break it. There's a few things. I think the club broke that tree, but. The snow's so thick on the way down that it you can't really build a lot of speed up, so you just kind of hit it at like a meh speed. I think the club is just so fat and heavy that even though it couldn't build up a lot of speed, the tree just couldn't quite stop it in time. In fact, I think the club hit it, couldn't break it, but then when I used the winch to winch to the tree in front of it, between the club's weight and the winch power and all the rest of it, I think the tree finally tapped out and gave in. And yeah, jumped over there. It's quite nice though, when you jump, how it lands it, I don't even think it took any damage that time. Or if it did, it was uh, not a whole lot. Of course, it had to glitch again. Again, apologies for them, but I, uh, yeah, I've run out of editing space by now. So anyway, that's about it for today though. Definitely uh, worth getting, worth downloading this and giving it a go. It's probably one of the ones you'll keep. So uh, yeah, that's about it for today. I hope you enjoyed, I hope that helps. Thanks for watching. 
it's all goddamn professional, of course, and I'll be back soon.